There are many EVs in India which are world class products. They offer everything in terms of range, features and sophistication. However, they are relatively expensive. But the EV stage, the EV phase in India is still in an experimental phase where people are slightly skeptical about burning more money for EVs. And that's why clever folks at Tata Motors decided that, hey, why don't we address this problem in terms of this, the all new offering from Tata Motors in the name of Tata Tiago EV, which promises to be the most affordable EV in India. Can this solve the biggest problem of affordability and be the catalyst in being the game changer in the EV segment in India? Hello and welcome back to Shadow Drives. We are here in Goa to find out if this latest internet is actually worth it or you could give it a miss. With due respect, Tata Tiago has been one of the smartest looking hatchbacks in the country and the same legacy and parameters have been carried over to the Tata Tiago EV as well. Of course, with green credits, good to see this being an EV. Get some subtle typical EV changes like for example, you have the gloss grille here which is completely blocked out because this is not an IC car and you actually don't need the air intake for combustion and you have the blue hint which is running across from the front left portion to the front right portion of the car you get projected headlamps with DRLs overall a design which is kind of smart and neat at the same time moving slightly downwards you have the tri arrow treatment here and there's some tri arrow treatment here as well in the gloss grill that we were talking about these are the fog lamps of course old school halogen fog lamps but thankfully Tata's at least offered them there's some manufacturers who have actually decided that let's not add fog lamps to our cars off late that's not the case here of course no front parking sensors not at all expected at this price point you have the front lower part of the bumper which is kind of nice and chic in design with the subtle touches and creases overall a design which is going to be loved by many people of course Last but not the least, you cannot miss out on the EV badging that is there in the front of the car here. Imagine you're driving the Tata Tiago EV in Charapunji where it rains all the time and it starts raining like this. The wipers are going to be activated, not in this case because the car is off right now, because this car also gets auto sensing wipers, which is a very interesting thing at this price point. You don't get alloy wheels in the car, I really wish at least the top end variant should have had an option at least of alloy wheels. People might miss it. These are the 14 inches of tires. My only wish to Tata Motors with folded hands is I really wish these were not the tires here because they are firstly hard compound tires and for some reason they skid a lot you know you can see the surface here it's just mild gravel with some mud here and the car is actually skidding to glory because of this poor tires i really wish tata motors could have done something to change the tires here and then you have the ev badging here which is kind of expected of course and then you have the side indicators on the orvms neat move there the passenger side the co-driver side does not get a request sensor but the driver's side gets one interesting move there moving to the rear you get large windows here, there's no partition which is a good thing, the rear passengers are not going to feel claustrophobic for sure. This is of course the charging port of the car. Oh, boot space is very important in a hatchback because of course this even in spite of this being an EV, you're going to use the boot quite often and uh, thankfully the boot has been largely retained in terms of the spaciousness you can easily accommodate a cabin bag and uh, something else like a small bag or something and you also have a puncture kit which comes with the car just in case you need it i really hope you don't need that and you also get a parcel shelf but talking about the rear of the car in general you have the stop lamp there you have the rear wiper here and a couple of halogen treatment here for both the entire unit as such you get the halogen uh, tail lamps there you have a neatly integrated reverse camera here and there's a small button to open the boot which is kind of very classy instead of having the old school method to open the boot again when you're talking about the rear in general you have the nice touches to the rear bumper with strong creases which kind of define the tata tiago ev as it reads here so the best part about a tiago ev is although it's affordable it doesn't actually look like especially in the interiors tata hasn't gone all guns blazing in terms of cost cutting like other manufacturers do which also means that it's quite a good thing because uh, at approximately 12.5 lakh rupees on road bangalore this car kind of makes sense in the ev segment so let's quickly get started you get a flat bottom steering wheel here with which is actually kind of leather wrapped and it feels pretty good to hold uh, this is the horn of the car you have the display here for various things and more importantly you have the battery percentage indicator and of course the range that gives you a perspective on what is the range left in the car in the remaining battery 
and then you have a couple of other controls which are kind of very similar to other Tata uh, EVs which I won't get into detail for now and then you have the screen here which is a 17.8 centimeter screen and uh, the responsiveness of this is fine but I've been kind of sensing it from a long time since a couple of years especially when since the Safari was launched that Tata I think should uh, kind of revamp their infotainment systems especially the UI because the competition has better UIs even cars like Citroen C3 have a much better UI when you compare that to this uh, but that said, uh, there is one thing that is of big advantage in the kitty of the Tiago V That is the Harman Kardon music system It's a proper 4 plus 4 speaker music system and even at 100% volume levels the speaker does not jar Which is a very good thing because we have seen cars especially like Innova High Cross Which kind of tend to jar even in 50% of the volumes which isn't a good sign at all And yeah, so these small things kind of make a lot of difference when you actually get cars like these home and then you have a couple of medium quality plastics here. I won't say this is the best of the best, but considering that this is the price package that it belongs to and it has a different use case to be affordable on your pocket, this is com comparatively fine and not a problem at all. And of course, no auto dimming IRVMs here, you have to do it manually. And talking about the sun blinds here, you don't get the uh, mirrors there and there is no illumination as well. However, you have a mirror here on the co-driver side. So, uh, even the ORVMs are electrically adjustable. Mentioning this explicitly because uh, cars like Citroen C3 don't get one. The door pockets are of decent size. A lot of materials in this cabin are kind of manageable. And of course, manual handbrake here. This is a, a drive mode selector, reverse neutral drive and sport. Sport mode is really good in this car, which you'll obviously get to know during the uh, time when we actually review this car in terms of the driving dynamics. So another thing is you get leatherette seats and these are the small things which I kind of really really like because these uh, seats although they're not pure leather they're so much so much better than the fabrics that you get in most of the cars uh, and then you have uh, two buttons here doing the same job this is for region reduction region increasing here and uh, then this is the charging button here for the car and of course you can uh, open the boot directly from here which is kind of uh, intuitive and nice so there are two small cup holders here not kind of deep actually and uh, they are kind of manageable here another small storage space for small bottles like this which is pretty helpful but what is kind of very important is the driver's seat is adjustable for both rake reach and even manual height adjustment not expecting electrical seat adjustment at this price bracket but nonetheless a good move from tata here basically this is a zconnect app from tata motors for the tata tiago ev which functions with the connected car tech basically you can actually uh, turn on the fan before you enter the car for say 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you want and then you can actually uh, switch on the hazard lamp, the lights, the parking lights and what not which is kind of cool, this is for the horn of the car so basically this is the uh, valet mode and valet mode will kind of enable few settings in the car and you can actually change that uh, valet, for example you don't want your valet to take the car to say more than 1 or 2 kilometers. you can just set the radius here which is very helpful so that the car is not misused and then uh, you have the uh, health check of the car so let's run a quick scan of the car just like the x-ray of human beings and check out what is wrong with the car abhi to kuch wrong nahi hona chahi because it's a brand new car but this is so damn cool so one of the things that i kind of genuinely like in the tata tiago ev or tata tiago for that matter is the race is actually quite comfortable when you compare or when you consider that this is a small hatchback it's not a full grown hatchback like the a20 it's not very very spacious as such but it's not like the third row of Jeep Meridian where you don't want to spend even 5 minutes also. So, uh, this is the floor hump that is there. It is nominal. It's not very large or so. So, you'll be able to manage. My hand went here because I thought there is an armrest with cup holders in this car. But, there is not. So, you'll be able to manage. My hand went here because I thought there is an armrest with cup holders in this car. But, there is not there. Not sure why is that. Because, uh, at 2LX, I think Tata should have offered an armrest at least if not cup holders. These are speakers of the car. This is the door opening and closing. There is a grab handle here, just in case you want to hold for your dear life and somebody is driving the car. Uh, that's about it. Actually, the headroom is actually more than enormous because this has a slightly tall bush design. The legroom is decent. Another suppose actually quite good. But overall, you feel that you are in a nice place in this car. I just wish there was an armrest. It's I'm not going to digest the fact that after paying 12 lakh rupees. I still have to crave for an armrest, at least in the top end model, at least as an option, please. Another thing that I really wish Tata Motors had offered is rare race events because the thing is, uh, these basic things like rare AC events or something, they are not a luxury feature as such. They are a necessity in our Indian tropical condition. Not everybody is fortunate like us to stay in Bangalore in the cool climate where you have pleasant weather. There are so many parts of the country where it is kind of very, very 
scratching hot especially in summers that's why these things matter a lot so first thing first the electric motor pumps out a power of 55 kilowatt and the torque output is 114 newton meters and surprisingly the torque output is slightly lesser than the petrol counterpart of the tata diago so i have two modes one is city mode and one is sport mode so sport mode is where things get slightly ambitious in terms of uh, the way the car actually drives and sport mode is a lot lot more fun and we've been driving in this car in sport mode the last uh, since the last 30 minutes in the bylands of goa and this car is actually fun of course the city mode like the name suggests it's tailored towards getting out as much as range as possible from the car and the claimed range for this car from tata motors is 315 kilometers but uh, in reality you should expect somewhere around 200 kilometers but of course it all, it all depends on the driving condition the way you are actually driving the car because that is the biggest factor when getting and not talking about the range in any ev for that matter this is an electric fast steering and data motors has decided to favor the arm janta in terms of the steering of course people are trying to move away from hydraulic fast steerings and this is very light in terms of maneuvering we are doing 75 km per hour and the steering is quite light i really wish at least after 60 km or something the steering is slightly weighed up but I've seen this in most of the EVs that the steerings are way more lighter than what is supposed to be. But yeah, uh, that's from the steering perspective. Of course, in parking speeds, people are going to love it. It's very, very light and nimble. You can just squeeze this car anywhere thanks to its smaller dimensions and ease of drivability. So we get two disc brakes in the front and drums at the rear. The stopping bar is decent. Uh, decent for data science at least uh, in spite of the brakes being from the rear they do a decent job I mean there are a couple of instances when we had to spot large unscientific speed breakers on a way but the brakes did a decent job it's not really commendable commendable as such but since this is a slightly city focused car nothing much much to complain from that perspective so talking about uh, region levels you get three region levels here uh, zero being the least basically zero is where there's no regeneration happening and uh, of course the higher number being more aggressive there and this there's no single pedal driving as such but technically you can kind of try to attempt it uh, right now uh, my region mode is quite aggressive and the moment i leave the throttle the car kind of tries to slow down that is the single pedal driving that i was talking about and talking about other things in general uh, this is the horn of the car the typical tata horn uh, the horn pad are there on the other side and of course center as well center of the horn pad is quite hard uh, and the steering has been in tata motors for quite some time i think this kind of deserves a better replacement of it probably not in tiago ev such probably in punch ev if it comes and that's going to come for sure that's what the gut sense says talking about the power delivery of this car uh, the power output is 55 kilowatts on paper and most of you are going to find it quite reasonable especially considering the use case that this car is kind of catering to it's not very ambitious ambitious as such uh, but trust me especially if you have extra juice left in your battery if you want minimum range from your car slot it in the sport mode and most of your things are going to be taken care of when you consider that this is the most affordable ev in india right now another highlight is the ride quality it's very good and typically tata where the cars diligently absorb most of the potholes with great ease it does bump through larger ones but doesn't feel unsettled and ride on the whole is nice and comfortable but that said if you're a keen observer, you would feel that the suspension feels slightly stiffened to justify the EV characteristics. What's also nice is that this does not come at an expense of handling. Cornering is quite flat with minimum body roll. The batteries mounted below help in keeping a lower center of gravity. The suspension setup does complement the chassis well and changing directions on back-to-back -back corners is not a problem at all. This was something that was justified in the narrow bylands of Goa. You can cruise at 100 to 110 kmph and the car won't show any sense of nervousness at all. This is something to be appreciated but do note that the price you pay for this accelerating high speed driving is the drop in range. So before we get on to the big question if the Tata Tiogo EV makes sense as an overall proposition, let's get one thing very clear. Tata has made it quite straightforward that this is the most affordable EV you can buy in India which is kind of sensible and practical as well. But the good part is this doesn't look like the affordable EV because Tata has kind of loaded this car with all the bells and whistles so that you can even dream of not only this segment but even things like the auto rain sensing wiper and the TPMS and things like that which are especially the connected car tech features which are missing in segment above this. But 
Of course, just like every other car, there are some limitations which are there in the Tata Tiago EV as well. Firstly, we just felt that the real world range is nowhere close to what Tata is claiming. Although Tata claims a real world range of 315 kilometers, we still find that even getting something like 200 kilometers is going to be slightly challenging in real world conditions when you slot it into the sport mode. But if you don't get ambitious and if you use the city mode, you will be easily able to get somewhere around that range. But in mixed driving conditions, I would still leave it to destiny and your luck to find the nearest charger because this is not going to be very very easy when you want to do those intercity road trips. That said, that's an overall neat proposition from Tata Motors. But still, we have a long way to go before we can have this as the only car in our garage. If you guys like the video, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram. Take care and drive safe.